it's one of the most contentious issues in Nigeria. As the country prepares for next year's presidential election, the politics or principle of zoning. President Muhammadu Buhari's tenure is close to its end and attention has now shifted to issues of power sharing and geopolitics. With the unwritten arrangement of rotating the presidency between the north and the south, it is generally believed that the next president will be a southerner. But there are questions about where in the south the president should come from. So should Nigeria's next leader come from the southeast, which hasn't seen a democratically elected president since the 1960s, or should it be thrown open to candidates from every geopolitical zone in the region, including the southwest and the south-south? Will the southeast support other presidential candidates that emerge from those regions? I'll be joined by some intellectuals and socio-political experts to analyze what already looks like a southern dilemma ahead. I'm Somna Sambo, and this is The Arise Interview. And today we continue our discussion on the principle of zoning, which has become a flashpoint in the run-up to the 2023 election. President Muhammad Buhari, who is a northerner from Katsina State, will complete his tenure of eight years next year. As his term draws to a close, there are calls for a power shift to the south. Some analysts and politicians say the southeast, which has not seen a president or vice president since 1999, when the Fourth Republic began, should produce the next president. They say other regions in the south have had had a go at the nation's highest office. President Olusegun Obasanjo, who was president from 1999 to 2007, is from the southwest. Gulok Jonathan, president from 2010 to 2015, is from the south-south. With contenders from every geopolitical zone in the country declaring their intent to run for president, some political figures from the southeast say they will not support candidates from the southwest and south-south. So could next year's presidential race divide the south? Well, for more on this, I have with me in the studio Professor Odenta Odenta, a fellow of the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought, and Arise Analyst Dr. Sam Amadi. And uh, joining me from our Lagos studio is uh, political analyst and former Delta State Commissioner Kenny Okolubo, and during the show will be joined by Professor Abiodo Adeni. And uh, I'll start from you, uh, Kenny. What, what do you make of this um, divide that we're already having in the South ahead of the 2023 general election? I mean, shouldn't the South be speaking with one voice? Why do we have some people saying that uh, the South it seems marginalized and if it doesn't get the presidential slot in either the APC or PDP, then uh, it looks like there will be a challenge for them to support others who may emerge from uh, the southern part of the country? Oh, oh yes, uh, thank you for having me. First and foremost, if you remember the meeting that was held in Asaba by the Southern Governors, and uh, the one that was uh, that followed through in Lagos, uh, Akre Dulo, the spokesman for the Southern Governors, was very clear. The governors are united of the, from the across the party divide. If you remember, all the governors were almost all the governors were present in Lagos for the last meeting of the uh, South South Governors uh, Forum. And they clearly said it that the power should shift to the south. And uh, I don't know who else can speak for us but our governors who are leading us. But there have been a few uh, tunes that have been uh, discordant, which is, which, is, which is actually allowed in, uh, in certain climes like this. Uh, but if you look at uh, the parties closely, in APC, you have only Bello from the North Central aspiring to become the president, although he has not declared. And uh, most of the declarations that you have seen uh, from uh, the likes of Bola Tinubu to uh, the other people who have declared in the, the APC, you will see that they are mostly Southerners. Fire Me has been touted to run, even though he has not declared. Oshiba Joy is said to run, even though he has not declared. Amechi is said to run, even though he has not declared. Uh, uh, and you, you, are, you accept that all these are... Uh, uh, People from the south. So it's only in PDP that you have the likes of Tambuwa, Bala Mohammed, uh, Alajatiko, Abubakar, and uh, if and Kwakwansu and a few others coming from the north. And it will be made clear in, in, when the, uh, as the time of, unfolds that it is the it is the uh, it is the southern governor's uh, declaration that will be upheld. 
Because if you look at it, you are not going to talk about political parties. Uh, 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 Mohammed Buhari is from is from the is from the northwest, and he has done eight years. So you can't be saying that because there has been no PDP president who has done eight years or so, then we should not be talking about the southern presidency. And if you also see what the the the, the, the people that have thrown their hats into the ring in the south from the PDP, the likes of Pius Anim, uh, the likes of uh, Wiki is being touted. Uh, Okoa is being touted to throw his hat into the ring. Uh, uh, Peter B has also said he's going to run. And uh, it, it tells you that it's going to be mo most likely a southern affair. Uh, that, that's that's my, my, my perspective. Okay, let, let, let's get to uh, hear from you, uh, Professor Denta. I mean, he has set the stage by mentioning all the names and all of that. Why do you think that there's a, pot a potential uh, uh, challenge with uh, uh, the South if eventually the South East, which feels highly marginalized, uh, doesn't get any of the top presidential uh, uh, candidates coming, uh, either from APC or PDP, from that zone? The North-South power shift as a construct is false binary because you operates out of a uh, a deep sense of concealment and deflection. When you talk about the South, you purport to mean a unified South in terms of geography and demography. That is not real. When you talk about the North, you purport to talk about a unified North in terms of geography and demography. That is equally not attainable in terms of the sociology of the nation and its founding. So when you talk about the Southern power shift, it consists equally the multiple distribution of power across several geographies in the South. Obasanjo was a president from 1999 to 2007. And he secured that presidency on the basis of sacrifices made by people from across the South, mostly. It may interest you to know if we put this point on public display for the first time possibly in our recent history. Falaye was not adopted as an AD candidate at the Rovan Hotel in Ibado. He was adopted in Abuja in a very large conclave of the party when Chief Emeka Zive still alive step down for him. Ezebe was the candidate of the Southeast and the South South. He purchased his form of one million naira as then was, as Fale did, as Bolaige did. In a seven hours period conversation in the party, he stepped down upon the audience of the party for Falaye for the purposes of Abiola's tragic mandate. Obonion won election in Kaduna, the primary election of APP. We didn't even look his way. He was secretary of the Alliance Committee of the two parties. We didn't look his way. We persuaded the party leaders to adopt the Falaish in cafe ticket. That's a primary consideration when you talk about geography and demography. It will be un unattainable to expect a Southwesterner to put himself forth in this current cycle for the presidency and hide under their morphos indeterminate geography of the South to say power is shifting to the South. What is it shifting to the South? To the Southwest after Eight, after how many years? Eight plus eight, 16 years of presidential reign in that region. If you have a Southwest presidency for eight years, in that amorphous sense, it means it goes on another amorphous north for another eight years, not minding whether it is not central, whether it is not east or not west. I can't hold brief for the north, but I do know that the scene of Otman and Fodio, which is the Fulani corridor, from Sokoto to Amadou Bello, down to Shagari, down to Yeradua, down to Buhari, I will not mitigate for the north, its own geography and demography, to sort out how they have to the micro zone there. I can yeah, speak I mean, because, because it's a very huge issue, them, even in the north, too, speak, where you are hearing people saying that should the president uh, who comes from the north always come from the me, northwest? Why don't you have some from, some from the north central some, or even northeast that hasn't had a shot? But just hold on there. We would like to hear. Um, Associate Professor uh, Dr. Sam Amadi on this issue. I mean, this geopolitics is real, and a lot of people are bringing this to proper perspective. I would like to hear what you think about this uh, microzoning, as it's usually called. Well, I, I think my view at uh, Alliance Mode Udenta, not because he sits beside me, because <laughs> politics is the art of the possible. And so it's a construction. You have to be clear on principles and, of course, on confidence. So the Principle is merit. People can compete. Everybody can. And that's what conscious says. But the second principle is that politicians accommodate affirmative action, what they call zoning. So the people say, yes, there's no zone in the Constitution, but under the uh, State of the Republic, as it were, a, a bill of tragedy, it was clear that you needed to first, you know, um, encourage the Southwest. You needed to deal with a crisis of loss of confidence in the state. 
and there was that pandering to the southwest specific. It was not to the south, it was to the southwest to deal with a, a, a very clear political crisis. So the point is, framing the south, like you said, as a, 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 what they call it, maybe a uniform political entity, that may well be good. We are part of the south alliance and, and, and uh, uh, solidarity, but the question is, if the south is unified, and the South understands that the Southwest has done eight years plus eight, and the South South has done six under the President Jonathan. It should also be a Southern voice that say that that Southeast that has not done in that South, and that is now eager for this, and that has a present danger of what I call the IPOB or whatever crisis going on. So, so the point then would be, if if I have to, uh, if I have to abstract from politics as merit. Then the question would not be, why don't you go the full hog of affirmative action? Yeah, so, so the difficulty is. I just want to ask you yeah, this: yeah. If uh, the 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 South is, is given a vice presidency, mm -hmm. since you are putting the vice presidency into calculation, uh, saying for example, an uh, Obasanjo had eight years and an Oshibanjo has mm -hmm. had eight years. Mm -hmm. Now, going into 2023, yes. if the South is is given a vice presidential slot by either the APC or PDP, will they still assuage your feelings? Of uh, uh, the feelings of uh, uh, the people in the in the southeast will he remedy some certain uh, things in, in in that geopolitical zone. Very good question. We go with perception. But it's not a zero sum. It's win lose. Okay. Now, for example, Ekwebe was close to winning the ticket in, in 1999. Okay. He lost narrowly. Now, if southeast is going to get a south a vice president, that may kind of you know mitigate. A full failure. But the question is this you can't have a Southern president and a Southern vice president. Definitely. So it's a lose lose. So the point is that if you're going to zone, by the way, I prefer that you do by merit because, in the real sense, development challenges are not zonal. But the point is that if you have to carve out from merit based politics, which is open competition, they have to be principled enough to use that zoning to address a real affirmative challenge. So you can't say one zone to a South that has no loss of merit. For example, eight years, let's forget about VP, eight years of President Obasanjo for Southwest is no longer a case of dealing with a, a Southwest crisis of injustice. So if, you, if for example, in APC, Oshibanjo can't become the president because of succession. If he wins the election, that's fine. It's part of politics. In APC can say, we want to zone to the South. And they said, we're going to zone to our vice president. If they feel so, no problem. Now, but if you're going to use zoning, for example, PDP that's out of power, you will not say PDP say we're zoning because we want to deal with the injustice of a particular moment. We feel politically that we can accommodate this crisis. But the, the question is, should PDP now zone to the south that has, is not suffering any injustice vis-a-vis -vis the north? For example, since 1999, the south has had cumulatively about 16 years of presidency or more under Jonathan and Obasanjo. Obasanjo was eight years, but Jonathan six or 14 years, okay. The, the, the North has held, or we hold, 10 years if Primbori finishes his tenure. So the question then is, between South and North within a party called PDP, you can't say really, honestly, that's injustice against the South in PDP. So the question I'm throwing up is that, look, zoning response to a certain under development, whether yeah, it's a so certain injustice, injustice. So, like so there's say. no injustice but to I, the I, south I'll, I'll as a whole. Into this, uh, yeah. uh, Udenta. Okay. Let, let's take a look at the merits of the south. Is actually saying that uh, you know they, they 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 just need to get this ticket. How has the south is reached out to other parts of? The South, that's talking about the South-South and the Southwest. It, shouldn't it be a, a sort of political negotiation between leaders of the South-South, leaders of the Southwest coming together and then you lobby them and you let them know that, look, we haven't done enough. We need to be given an opportunity to either be president or vice president this time around too. Okay, now this conversation goes on at multiple levels. At the level of the nationality groups, Afeniferi, Pande, Fohanese, their voice is very clear. Or on, the on the one hand, they want a southern shift of presidential power. On the other hand, some people speak about the injustice to the southeast. That means there should be maybe the right of face refusal. But as powerful and influential as nationality leaders are, they are not the controllers of party destinies. The party determines its own choices and options on the basis of core established leadership. Maybe the National Security Committee, maybe the caucus, maybe the BOT, and so on. Some of these leaders may be influential from the outside, but they're not there. And members of the southeast you know, leadership collective in the political domain 
who are part of this multiple conversation that the governor's forum, my friend, mentioned, they always hide under this larger picture of a southern presidential movement. When that happens, it conceals a whole lot of tensions within the South. It behoves not just the South East leaders to push for recognition and acceptance that you have had your turn in the Southwest and partly in the South South. It is our turn now. It's equally for the other leaders to appreciate that rapacity of power in our values of power or greed of power is whatever that unravels elite consensus. And a lot of sentiment is growing in the Southeast. If within the two major political parties, you find the prospect of the elite not stepping back to say Southeast you have their take. And for example, an APC or PDB candidate will emerge maybe from the Southwest. Does it serve the interests of the Southeast to go along with such a candidate? Surely not. I don't expect a proud Southeast son or daughter to say you try a lot with somebody from the Southwest to extend what they can call a major hegemony. Yes, or South South. You may well how to cut a deal to answer your question directly. Is there a progressive northerner? For example, in the PDP, based on what Dr. Sam said here, that the balance of zoning power within the North and South in PDP more favors the flexibility of options. To say, not just the vice president, but inclusivity. They talked about the last eight years having no serious Igbo voice at the national security and defense apparatus where matters of destiny of the nation and themselves equally are decided. It could be part of that challenge to say, rather than an amorphous certain presidency, that could shift the power away for 16 or 32 years. It's better to come close or not that the Southwest did yeah, in 2015. I, I mean, in which case, submission. light enough there, they could have it. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just go to you, uh, Ken Okolubo, uh, to talk about this issue that they've all raised, the need for political negotiation uh, between the South, 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 East, and Southwest. Oh, we, we, we've actually lost him at the moment. But I would like to come to you, uh, Dr. Sam, about that. Uh, let, let's talk about the issue of zoning and federal character. There's no zoning in the Constitution, uh, but we have federal character enshrined in the Constitution. Is there a difference between these two, actually? Uh, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm a strong supporter of federal character because if you look at the literature of state and formation, what helps states like us, more, uh, poorer states like us, that have strong ethnocentric tendency, is actually power sharing. In the Constitution, says power... Uh, federal character. Now, if you have under PDP before now, we, we didn't used to quarrel too much about the presidents because first, if you're going to see Obasanjo was there, there's his chief of staff was a northern a general, his secretary of government was a, a, a South South person, yes. uh, mm -hmm. his a main aide at the villa was an Anambra man, ministers were shared, petroleum power. So a shared government presents better option for win-win. If you look at even the Willis Commission of 1958, the minorities were worried about the, the impact of McPherson constitution that created regionalism. They were trapped in a big region. And what was the solution? We said we have to put a bill of rights and provide representation. So the notion of our constitutional development has been to create a concept of shared power so that each group, everybody, feels part of a bigger uh, federal uh, government. All right, very so, interesting. So, so, so I've been I told that, that uh, Kenny Okolubo is back. Uh, so, uh, Kenny, like I was saying, in, in the south of Nigeria, I mean, the southeast feels marginalized uh, by the southwest, which has a higher voting population, and uh, the south south. Uh, in this instance, should we have more political negotiation among these three geopolitical zones in the south? Uh, and then secondly, I was asking um, Dr. Sam, before you went off, the critical issue of zoning. Now, zoning is not in the Constitution, but federal character is in the Constitution. How do you see this playing out? And what does it mean to you, actually? Okay, well, the first question is the negotiations. One thing that uh, most of your, uh, my colleagues in Abuja uh, did not point out was that uh, this, uh, Good Luck Jonathan was a president by accident. It wasn't the president that we were expecting that uh, uh, they thought that they were going to zone it to the south-south. If uh, Dua, may he so rest in peace, didn't pass on, good luck, Jonathan will never have been president of Nigeria. So we must look at it from a holistic point of view, because some so, summary of what they have tried to say is that zoning promotes merit. But if you look at Bayelsa, Bayelsa does not post up to 600 or 700,000 votes. And you know Kanu is talking about almost how many, six, five million registered voters. So when we talk about zoning, it's not that we are not saying that people cannot run for office. Because if you remember in 2007, Richard Okorocha insisted on running that race to the end. And he got about 400 votes. 
against Era was 2000 and something, maybe 2,700 or so. 400 votes, 400 delegates was a lot of votes in, in a PDP presidential primaries. And he came second in that primaries. And it was, it was the whole idea was that we're zoning it to the north. But that did not stop Richard Okorocha from running. So what am I trying to say? When you say negotiate now, we must also look at what the, we are, we are, we're facing as a country right now. We are at, we are at an end, at a wit's end, where ethnic uh, bias has never been this high. You know, in the southeast right now, on Mondays have been declared a public holiday, on, an unofficial public holiday, even with the governors not being able to take control of it. And in the southeast, the IPOB uh, uh, ideology has become one that has been acceptable among almost all, most of the youths in uh, the southeast. And so some people have looked at it and said, maybe if we have a southeastern as a president, that would assuage the feeling of the southeast at, at this point in time. But like you rightly said, zoning is not entrenched in the constitution, it's its federal character. But if you look at the PDP, PDP has an unwritten agreement in terms of zoning. And uh, a lot of people have urged uh, the front runner in the last election, uh, Alajababa Tiku, to continue in his, in, in his stead to want to become the president of Nigeria. But the dynamics have changed because like uh, the middle bed uh, uh, a group, the Afeni Ferry, the Ohaneze, the Pandev, have clearly said that, look, we want uh, the presidential tickets for the two leading parties to go to the south. And so how do you get it? You have to negotiate. I saw Paul Sanyim the other day meeting with the caucus of the PDP in the National Assembly. Of course, he's a part of the National Assembly. He was number three citizen. He was a Senate president. This kind of negotiations is what you expect. Well, the, the negotiations have to be a larger picture. Because in the APC, for example, Bola Tinubu, I, I, I hardly see anything that is going to stop him from clinching the ticket if he, if he continues the way he's going. No matter very, the very rhetoric interesting that, development there. that, 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 the, no matter the I'll rhetoric just... that uh, Fire Me, Oshiba Joe, and the others are trying to bring up, the Rochas Okorocha, the Ojizo Kalu, they don't have the delegates that can match Bola Tinubu from my own asse assessment and my analysis. So is it fair for us to go back to the Southwest? They will tell you that, look, the Southeast doesn't vote for the APC that they lost all the elections in the southeastern states. So why are we going to compensate them with a presidential ticket? Again, in the PDP, we know we have, we have always won elections in the southeast. So they will say, oh, look, this is the time for us to have a southeasterner to get the ticket of the PDP. So the, the, the negotiations is going to be one that is going to be very thick. Because if you look at it, uh, Summer, is it fair that uh, Baja is, is the number four citizen of the country from the southwest? If you look at the fact that Toshiba is, is from the southwest, is the number two citizen. If it was a PDP administration, it wouldn't go like that. You know, we always had a way of, of zoning the sixth position, the sixth position, which is the chairman of the party, the secretary of government, the president, the vice president, the senate president, and the speaker of the house. But the APC didn't zone it that way. They, they, they left the number two man to come from the southwest, the number four man to come from the southwest, the secretary of the government comes from the north, the, uh, the northeast has the senate president. So if uh, it's going to be one that you must... Look at all these dynamics, especially because the APC is the ruling party and is the party to beat in the elections, even though I think their scorecard coming to the elections will be quite poor because of what we are facing in terms of the economy, in terms of corruption, and in terms of security. That, that will be another uh, aspect you're going to have to look at it. But anybody coming with the third force at this point is quite late because the two leading parties at the end of the day will produce, either of them will produce the president of this country. Right. Uh, very interesting submission you've got there. Uh, when we come back uh, from this break that we're going on, we're going to x-ray some of the issues you actually raised there. That, For example, the Southeast has not been able to produce more votes So for the APC. So why should the APC give the Southeast its presidential ticket alongside other critical issues? But we just have to go on a short break right now. <laughs> Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Somna Sambo. And we've been talking about uh, zoning in Nigeria and then as it relates to the southern part of the country. Now, the, the seeming division in the southern part of the country as it regards to what politicians call micro-zoning. So if the biggest political parties are actually to zone uh, their tickets, presidential tickets to the south, which part of the south should actually have it? Well, I still have with me in the studio Professor Odenta Odenta, a fellow of the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought 
and Arise Analyst, uh, Dr. Sam Amadi. And I've been told that uh, Professor Biodun Adeni, who's also another Arise Analyst, will be joining us. And uh, joining us from our Lagos studio is a uh, political analyst and former Delta State Commissioner, Kenny Okolubo. And I'll come to you, uh, Professor Odenta. I mean, Kenny, during the submission, raised some very critical issues. The APC cannot give its ticket to the Southeast because the Southeast hasn't been voting for it in the past two elections. And if you come to the PDP where the Southeast has always laid in bed uh, with that political party, uh, you find it difficult that at this time around when everyone thought that the PDP would easily just give the ticket to the Southeast, they are bringing all sorts of talk and saying that uh, under the Fourth Republic, uh, the, the, the tickets of the PDP have gone more to the South than to the North. So I want you to raise this issue, especially the issue of accidental presidency of uh, uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan that uh, Kenny raised. I mean, uh, should uh, the, the, the South is also be hoping to get an accidental presidency maybe in the future? Because when President Goodluck Jonathan was there, I mean, he exercised the full rights of a president. When we've had military heads of states, even from the north central of the country, they exercise full uh, you know, rights and privileges of a, a, a president or a head of state. So. Should we, in one way or the other, consider all of this? Now, my good friend, my comrade Kenny, you know, showed, displayed a very powerful clarity of mind. The Southern push for the presidency in a very bland, amorphous, indeterminate form is for me the authorization of perfidy. How do you normalize political perfidy? He made it very clear. The South was boast massively for the APC. How will Bolatinibu, you know, yield the presidential ticket to somebody from the Southeast where they hardly get much vote? So notwithstanding that, uh, that Obasanjo has spent eight years as a president from his neck of wood, and Osip Banjo, who he had to put in there, is said, what are going to complete an eight years presidential, vice presidential run? So when the Southern leaders and the Middle West speak about the generic South and the power shifting there, maybe those leaders are not privy to shenanigans of politicians. They speak in broad, patriotic sense for justice and equity. But politicians speak with calculated intent for self-interest, which can you say has been displayed with Bolatin with example. And Southeast people are not sleeping on the matter. Some made it very clear. I myself very clear. I'm a participant in the dialogue for power shift to the Southeast. But I'm mindful that political expectations that ideological spectrum may not work out at the level of practice. We need practice can overcome contradictions. Is it good for me to associate with somebody outside of the Southeast in case the politicians from the other two zones of the South behave as expected? I don't let the generic zone into the South and say, okay, anywhere it goes to the South isn't okay for the South. It's not okay for the South. Why wouldn't I, for example, for a few years, a few days ago, I was with uh, Governor Bauchi State to see Gulo Jonathan, where I was introduced as somebody helping to promote his own candidacy. It's not because I want a Northern president. It's a real gut battle. If the PDP in the South, if the PDP do not give this ticket to the South, and AP, to the Southeast, and APC give it to the Southwest, for example, that means an eight years Southwest presidential journey, contributing with an, another eight years northern turn in an amorphous form, another eight years of another amorphous Southern presidency. It is better like some express state, an inclusive government of somebody even outside the Southeast negotiated to put my people right in the picture and in the frame for a quick presidential turn may be better for me than to accept another eight years of a Southwest presidency. A uh, for a South, or a South, South presidency. So, so would you, would you uh, um, subscribe to the idea that some people are already saying that if someone from the Southwest actually gets the ticket of the APC, uh, that in one way or the other, there should be protest vote from beyond, the Southeast against... Beyond that. even an ideological kind of mindset, at the level of principles of political power and dynamics, I will work my heart out. I will spend my blood to ensure that no Southeasterner we back a Southwesterner in the current presidential term. Well, wouldn't that be blurring the chances of the South the entirely is that the in South, the election? The southern chances I mean, has already been blurred by politicians because of the double speak. If the credit the list of this world and the southern governor speak with passion, as we did in 1998, as a founding leader of this republic, to say, as if step down for Falaye, in spite of the fact that he could have won that primary election. Obo Nyonu stepped down for, for Falaye, in spite of the fact that his party denied him ticket. And they worked hard for the party to win. In an environment, Obasanjo, who won, did not even get 5% of the vote. 
I do not see why there should be a conversation of this nature. Uh, right, if we are morally upright and principled in our approach to politics, we must understand that it's a turn of the southeast now. But if the politician will not yield that kind of space, nobody from the start is going to fold his tent. All right. Uh, there's no morality in politics. Absolutely. Like it's understand it. I appreciate it. So fully. I've been told that Professor Abiodun Adeni is joining us now. And, and I'll come to you, uh, uh, Dr. Sam Amadi. Uh, on the issue of uh, a, a like, the likelihood of a protest vote from the Southeast against any potential uh, candidates of the APC from the Southwest or even the PDP from the South-South, what do you foresee? Clearly, not just Southwest and South-South. The idea is very simple. If we want to do free election, competitive election, Go ahead and people can come from anywhere. So we choose our candidates. So nothing should stop the North from running. But the essence of, if the essence of zoning is to recognize a historic wrong, then zoning means southeast. Zoning can never in any language, I teach, sem I teach it semantics. Of language. Of language. There's no language logic that says that zoning means giving, rewarding the man who is ahead ahead, at all, at head, head start, southwest, giving them more. Or giving south, south, mm -hmm. that has, mm -hmm. has the entire six years out of a possible eight years. A slot. So I'm in support of merit based process with shared power. But if you're going to zone, the only possible zoning is southeast. If you don't zone southeast, then it means that the southeast will make the right choice, wishes to have less of eight years than 14 years. Anybody apart from Gulag Jonathan, who becomes a candidate from the south, south, or southwest, will do a, a potential eight years. With the same zoning spirit, eight years back to the north. So the Southeast is left with simple calculation. We're going to spend 14 years to have a 16. fighting, 16 years to have a fighting chance to be president. Yeah. But we can also have only <laughs> eight years if a Northern I takes. So look at it this way. Very simple. Zoning, Southeast, no zoning, open game for all Nigerians. Yes. And yeah. the Southeast. And, and I'll no come choice. to you, uh, Kemi. Let's take a look about um, the idea of jettisoning um, zoning entirely. Uh, why do you think that as we head to 2023, uh, more politicians, especially from the north, are campaigning for zoning to be jettisoned. I mean, you would have listened to Alaji Atiku Abubakar saying that zoning is not in the constitution, and yet more people from the south came for him saying that uh, uh, he benefited from zoning. Uh, having been a vice president from the northeast, why should he be uh, standing against the issue of zoning? Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Uh, I must agree with you. It, it, with all due respect, I think uh, Alajati Kwabubaka was uh, playing the politics of self-interest when he said that it, zoning has not been in the Constitution. He, he's uh, an endemic member of the PDP, and he's, he's well aware, and he knows how he became the vice presidential candidate. Rimi was angling to become the vice presidential candidate. So many people, even uh, uh, Lamido was, was also angling. So many of them were angling. And he was already elected, if you remember very well. He was uh, the, the governorship candidate already in waiting for Adamawa. But if you look at it holistically, there is no uh, political party or, or individual you will not see that is talking about self-interest. If you ask a Nubu today, he will tell you in all honesty that what everybody is saying is true. If we are to be realistic as a country, the Southeast should produce the next presidential candidate. But you are also going to look at what they are bringing on board. Why I said the South South was an accidental was because we have not had a Southerner actually express his interest to say he's going to become president of Nigeria and he will clinch the ticket. That is why you see today people are angling for a week here and angling for a COA to throw their hats into the ring. But if we gestation zoning, what are we going to do in a situation where we have uh, the delegates all coming to say, look, we are supporting this candidate because this aspirant has given so much, in, so much for the party? You'll find that those are the kind of aspirants that will emerge. And don't forget that we must be realistic. The watch chest of each aspirant will determine who becomes the presidential candidate. Let's not uh, try to deceive ourselves here. We have all gone through the process of indirect primaries. We know money has changed hands, and there is no point in deceiving ourselves. And who has, sometimes for the delegates, the person that has, with due respect, that has the most money can influence some of them into making their choice of who becomes a candidate of the party. So how do we change it? We have to change it with the debates that we're doing like this in maybe a national conference. National conference, there's no time for national conference because if the president signs the electoral act, it will then mean that we must have the primaries before August 18th. 
since February 18th is when we are going to have the presidential and the National Assembly elections. It therefore means that the political parties must have their primaries. And if you know what the political parties do, Sumner, you know that they will not have those primaries until maybe the 10th of August or the 12th of August. APC will be timing PDP, PDP will be timing APC, so that nobody will decamp from APC to PDP to go and get the ticket. And that's exactly what has been happening. And you know with the amendment that says that pre-election matters must be within 14 days, it gives no time for you to have any other primaries if a candidate is found wanting. So this idea of gestationing zoning will make it, of course, there can be zoning in, 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 in written, but at least let us hold it in terms of uh, a gentlemanly agreement so that the, south, the southern uh, uh, part of the country can have a sense of belonging. Because if we, if we want to assuage the feelings of the southeasterners right now, we must get somebody that is in the mold of the south-south or the southeast to become the president of this country in, in the real sense. If the Southwestern, if a Southwesterner becomes the president of this country again, it will be seen as unfair. Just like I said that if you look at Femi Bajabi Amila, he's from the Southwest. If you if were to if we're to be fair and to call a spade, a Southeasterner should have been the speaker of this country and not okay, someone uh, from Kenny, the Southwest. Just, just hold they, on they look, they look just hold on there while I come uh, to Professor Odenta Odenta. And I'll ask you this critical question because there are lots of permutations ongoing within the political system here and there. If we have, uh, for example, maybe a PDP or APC offering their presidential ticket to someone uh, from the South South, but who has Southeastern origin, I mean, like, yeah, from Igbo extraction, <laughs> like from Delta State and all of that, mm -hmm. would the South mm -hmm. actually uh, support such a person? Okay. Or, secondly, if we have a situation whereby the two biggest political parties in the APC, PDP, actually having Northern candidates emerging and they decide to give a presidential, a, a vice presidential slot to the Southeast. Will that be acceptable? Would you easily go with them against uh, what the Southwesterners or South Southerners, okay. if you may call it that way, may Simple, be Simple, let me put thinking. it this way. The tyranny of majoritarian groups in this country is in full display. But subconsciously, you don't even know what is out there. You talk about the Southeast and the South-South, and then the Igbo catchment area of the South-South. Igbo, Southeast, and part of South-South. Southwest, predominantly Yoruba, in a country of 350 or 400 distinct ethnic nationalities, we've contracted a conversation to suit the purposes of the Mediterranean group. That means in the north, if you talk about power shift to the north, maybe the mindset is power shift to the house of Fulani, and not the Angas or the Tiv or the Jukun, or other multiplicities of minorities in the northeast. So your presumption is that because somebody is Igbo speaking in the south, south, it should be embraced by the Southeast. We are talking about zonal distribution of power here. Southeast, South, South, Southwest. And each of these centers, minus Southeast and South, South and Southwest with predominant Igbo population, the rest of the country is parchments of ethnicities and nationalities. If the PDP takes its candidate from the South, South, and the APC peaks from the Southwest, the Southeast as a block, we have no choice than to cut a sensible, inclusive political deal with somebody from the north. Because that is the shortest route to the presidency for them. And apart from the presidency, inclusivity. If you remember these past seven, eight years, like Sam pointed out brilliantly, it's not even a question of the presidential fan on you. It's how included are you in the conversation at the center, in the dialogue of power. If there's a federal, if there's a security and defense council meeting, are you there? Critical decisions about safety and governance, are you there? So it's not even a question of the presidency or the vice presidency. It's not a question of offering the Southeast a vice presidency. It suits the Southeast under this situation where there is a normalization of perfidy of the South by a grand amorphous zoning to that South to say we can cut a deal with anybody sensible and progressive in the North in order to <laughs> mainstream the Igbo Southeast into the power equation. Very interesting conversation you've got there, but we have to go on a short break. When we come back, we'll talk more on the last segment of the show on how we can ensure that there is a country ahead of 2023 before we we'll continue with this uh, dialogue of uh, zoning. Welcome back to the Horizon TV. I'm Somna Sambo, and we've been uh, discussing um, geopolitical balancing in the country 
the geopolitics of zoning and all of that I still have with me in the studio, Professor Odenta Odenta, a fellow of the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought and Arise Analyst Dr. Sam Mamadi. And joining me from our studio in Lagos is political analyst and former Delta State Commissioner Kenny Okulubo. Uh, it's unfortunate we couldn't get uh, Professor Abiodun Adeni to join us due to technological glitches. Our apologies on that. And I'll come to you, uh, Dr. Sam. Uh, there's a news that's just coming in that President General of the Igbo Social Cultural Organization, or Hanez Indigbo, Professor George Obiozo, has said that the status of Indigbo in Nigeria will be determined largely by where the 2023 president emerges from. Now, let's talk about that and your concept of shared power within the geopolitics of Nigeria. How can we ensure that we have a country at the end of the day and not divide this country or go our separate ways because of all these issues of geo balance, uh, geopolitical balancing and all of that, and some zones being angry because they are not given opportunities if eventually things do not go for certain zones the way they expect it to go. Well, well quickly, uh, let's say this. Uh, Onese has been very, you know, vital to this, to put together a Southern Alliance. Uh, Onese, Pandev, uh, Middle, Middle, Middle Belt Group, and Feniferi and others. So uh, they are now at pain to justify to their people why are they building a southern solidarity and can't that under 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 delivers for the southeast. Let me put it very clear. I am interested in shared power because the, the constitutional framework and our forefathers were wise that a, multi, a poorer society can only get it right, political stability, through sharing power. And shared power simply means that look, once people can identify themselves in the power equilibrium. They are content to a large extent. Now, zoning itself doesn't even cut it because zoning means it's a winner takes all. So, if you zone for eight years, it mean, doesn't mean that other zones wait for us. We'll finish, you know, dealing with the federal government. We'll hand over to you. So, really, it's actually these last six years or seven years that has created too much, you know, paranoia around, you know, who takes what power because the South is totally missing in the symbolism and the functionality of political power. So my concept of zoning power, uh, shared power is not new. It's in the constitution. Uh, Abacha talked about the, the, the multiple presidency. Yeah, in having several vice presidents and all of that. And the idea is create incentive. And political scientists are saying, look, if you look at countries all over the world, in fact, as far back as 1950, 1958, someone like Otto Lewis, who got the Nobel, the first black man, talked about it in what they call constitutionalism, is constitutionalization, which means creating multiple confederations and joining them by sharing the power. So I would say, if you have a, 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 a temperate, liberal-minded presidential candidate from either of the parties who structures a deal for all Nigerians, share the vital security platforms up, hand, or, or up front, southwest, southeast, south, south, south. You take that of uh, SSS, you take IG, you take attorney general. And for the south is, by the way, security is a critical concern. Look at the issues around killings, extrajudicial murder. So you want to see yeah, our, themselves being mainstreamed. It wouldn't matter who becomes the president. But if we're going to play this politics of South, let me put it clear. Southern solidarity without zoning to South is, is a fraud. All right. Especially in PDP. The NPC, <laughs> oh, oh, we can oh, oh. accept it. NPC can say, well, but, South, but, South can go. But in PDP, I, if you say I, South, I just, I just want to get some views of uh, Ken Okulubo here. Oh, uh, uh, all right, I've been told we have a challenge here. Uh, so, uh, Professor Odenta, Odenta, I, I just want to uh, uh, bring this situation, this scenario of the Southwest, actually. After having invested most of its politics in the past six, seven years in, in the APC, don't you think that it's reward time for the Southwest in the APC? Wouldn't it be unfair for the APC not to want to give this uh, geopolitical zone you know, its presidential ticket, considering the weight it put behind uh, uh, a Buhari presidency in 2015 and then in 2019? Okay. Uh, uh, we already know that of the PDP, the body language in that party seems to show that no one from the Southwest is seeking its ticket. But in the APC, don't you think that the Southwest needs to be rewarded let for me, its effort? Let me put it this way. Zoning is paradigm of restrained power. How do you restrain the appetite of the elite, rapacity, greed, and avarice for power? How do you constrain the elite to behave in a proper way, like some point that inclusive, inclusive government or governance? model. To ask the same question back to you and the viewers, what would you have made of an Alexei Kweme who led the G34, the last leg of the resistance to military rule, 
the nation's political class rallied around him as a visible symbol of that resistance and said, it is your turn to lead us into the next presidential era. He lost miserable to Obasanjo and he campaigned vigorously for him. He didn't say, oh, all the struggles and sufferings and leadership are provided for the party, guiding it. What is of Ezefe who go a bit in the presidential primary in Abuja, not the Rovan? And he said, with good cheer, I will campaign for you. What is of Obonion who was ignored by his party? I'm coming. So it's seven, eight years of the Southwest turn does not consecrate into reward. It's into constrained power. To say, we've had it, but for inclusivity, certain solidarity, this is what should be. I tell you, if based on the logic some has presented here, which is a very popular logic around, you do not give it to the Southeast. Like O'Hanese said, you give the people the option for their own political choices. Okay, I've come in, that choice could come in the form in which you look for a rear guard action with a sensible northerner who you partner with for this inclusive <laughs> so government. So you may order. go on bed with the north. I'm sure. You're rather than oh, vote oh, for very southwest person. Very interesting submission you've got here. Uh, but a lot of people from the south, south, and southwest may disagree with you on that point. I, I do. But I'll come to you, yeah. Ken Okolubo. Very quickly, I just want to put the same question to you. Don't you think that having invested so much of the last six to seven years of its politics in the APC, that the Southwest deserve the presidential ticket of the APC, and if they are given that ticket, they should be supported by other parts of the South. Well, it, 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 the truth about it is like what you said, the, the Southwest deserves the ticket of the APC. Much as we know that we are saying that the ticket should come to the Southeast, uh, but if you look at what the Southwest has brought on the table, uh, without the baller met, you know, I don't think there will be a Buhari. We must, be, we must call a spade a spade in terms of the amalgamation with what they did in 2015. And today, the Southwest states have voted massively for the uh, APC. But you see, what is what the dynamics that is going to change here, if I'm going to now digress from your question, is that Ohaneze is not doing enough. I'm quite disappointed in Ohaneze. They, they're just sitting down and releasing statements. Look at Timo State, for example. Richard Okorocha has declared for the presidency of this country. He doesn't have the structures of the party. The structures are with Hopu Zodima, the governor. The governor does not want to see eye to eye with uh, Hopu Zod, uh, Richard Okorocha. So how do you go to a convention and expect that Imo delegates will vote for Richard Okorocha? They will not vote for Richard Okorocha. They'll vote for who Hopu Zodima directs them to vote for. So this, the South has not put their house in order. And again, you know the scorecard of the APC's was is going to come to play when it comes to the Nigerians voting. You saw the elections in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory. People are hungry. A bag of rice is 35,000, 30,000 Naira. You remember that the bag of rice was 8,000 Naira. The, uh, the misery index is at, is at an all-time high. 33% is unemployment. We are talking about 15.63% for inflation, and people are saying that we're going to go into another recession. The central bank is already saying that they will not sell dollar to the, uh, to the banks in, in December. What are we talking about? Even if we get an APC Southeasterner, he will lose the election, and that's the absolute truth. So the only shortcut to a Southeasterner getting into uh, the presidency is through the PDP. And I disagree that if you get a South-South person of uh, Eastern extraction, the Easterners will abandon him. The Easterners will not, are not going to abandon him. They'll look at it that, look, we don't have a choice at this point. We have our brother in the South South, who is also one of us, who comes from a Southeast extraction. And uh, it is better uh, we take it than we, we leave it for the others, instead of going back to the North at this present point right, in time. All uh, right, Kenny, we must thank you so much uh, for giving us those, I mean, insights, perspectives. And it's more of like an appeal to the entire Southern uh, part of Nigeria to uh, come into a solidarity based on what you have said. <laughs> I mean, and we must thank you for joining us here from Lagos. And uh, Professor Udenta Udenta, who has been uh, talking about these issues, I mean, we can only wish you well. And Professor Sam Amadi, too, uh, who is an Arise News analyst. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Arise interview. The conversation continues. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambo.